Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 13 of the 30 days, 30 tips on productivity. Before we start, I would like to remind you kindly to please subscribe to this channel, to please like the videos that you, you like the content of, and please leave me comments down below so that I can know what you like, what you didn't like, and what else you want me to talk about. Let's start with today's topic, which is the imposter syndrome. Well, to be more specific, how imposter syndrome makes you unproductive. Um, let's, let's start with defining imposter syndrome first. I'm reading from Wikipedia right now. Imposter syndrome, also known as imposter phenomenon or imposterism, is a psychological occurrence in which people doubt their skills, talents, or accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as frauds. Raise your hand if, if that's you. Well, I can keep my hand, both hands up here because that's totally me. I've diagnosed myself with the imposter syndrome hmm, 15 years ago, maybe. And since then, I rarely came across an academic, especially if that's a woman who didn't identify with this. So let's get further into how feeling like an imposter makes you unproductive and why you should deal with your imposter syndrome. So when you feel like an imposter, you automatically want to hide, right? Because you you want to make yourself invisible because you have this constant fear of being found out that, that you don't deserve to be there, right? And as academics, what does that lead to for us? We hide our research as well. We try to make our research invisible as well because we are so not confident about it. We don't uh, want our research to be found out by other researchers who might then start criticizing the research and find all kinds of like shortcomings. Uh, and that would mean that, yeah, we are indeed frauds. We shouldn't be there doing that job. Um, basically, we are a waste of public resources. And what does that lead to? Of course, we don't share what we are doing, what we are working on. We are afraid of asking for feedback or mentorship or, or uh, help or support from other colleagues. We hide when we are feeling stuck about a certain aspect of our research, especially if we if we believe that we should be knowing that that thing and what, what to do in that moment. So as a result, we are left on our own because yeah, how can you get feedback or support or mentorship when you are hiding your, your, your work from everyone else? And paradoxically, what is the one single thing to be able to improve our research? get feedback, get, get um, helpful, constructive criticism and, and implement those changes that are asked of us so that our work could be better. And when you think about it, feedback is the only way scientific knowledge can be produced, right? because we have to go through iterations, we have to share our work with others and get their feedback and incorporate that. And that's how we are able to further our, our research and scientific knowledge in a, in a broader sense. So what does imposter syndrome lead to? Basically, it makes you cut this, this cycle of, uh, of 
feedback that you would otherwise um, welcome and incorporate in your research. How do we fix that? How do we fix imposter syndrome? Well, maybe that is a topic for another 30 days, 30 tips um, challenge in the future. Um, because you don't develop this imposter uh, syndrome uh, in, in one day. So, of course, you shouldn't be expecting for that to go away in one day, right? But you can already start chipping away at it. One of the things I uh, always do with my clients when, when they um, <laughs> present <laughs> that they are dealing with this imposter phenomenon themselves as well, is make them write a list of their achievements, a list of their accomplishments that they, they really feel proud of or that others find very important while they don't find important. So it could be uh, either of them. And another list of things that they are really good at. And once they are able to make those lists, we look at those and we say, there is, there is something there. I mean, you're not, you're not this empty bucket here, just waste of oxygen. You have something to offer. Maybe not all of the things that you want to offer, um, are there but a lot of other things are there so you may not be a genius statistician but you may be very well gifted in languages and this does not mean that you should not be using statistics in your research it just means that it may take you longer to learn it and the only way to learn it is to ask. So dealing with imposter syndrome requires you to be uh, continuously self-aware and, and self-observing. And basically, you need to treat yourself as if you are treating your best friend. Self-criticism is usually the reason why we get stuck in this imposter phenomenon. This was the tip of the day. I hope it helps. Please let me know if you have other questions around this and uh, whether you want me to um, delve deeper into um, other things on imposter phenomenon. Tomorrow I'll be back with a new video. Until then, mind your own revisions.